Hi guys, George Glinski here from Toe the Line, joined today by Carl Hobley. Carl, how you doing my man? Not bad, thank you. Good man, good man. Now Carl is the BKB23 heavyweight prize fighter alternate. Not a lot of people will know that. It hasn't really been publicised, but Carl is a new signing for BKB. So with that in mind, Carl, your reaction to your new signing for BKB? Well, do you know what? I, uh, I think it's fucking brilliant, really. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's um, somebody like me, you know, to be on the roster with some of the people that are on there is it's fucking wicked. I can't really say much more than that, really. You know, top guys. Uh, you know, there's levels to it. And like Jim and Joe said in the past, they're signing top quality guys now. So just to be part of that is, you know, it's massive, really. So. And you've had a taste for the competition. Obviously, we were down at Bournemouth down your ends at the BKB weekend yeah. down at Mark Rose's. How was that experience for you? Did you sort of taste that it was a definite uh, step up in competition? It's, it's absolutely quality. I mean, they're all top guys. James, Smudger, you know, I've done rounds with Mickey Parker before. You know, Mickey's opponent, Dave Thomas, I've sparred with him like a few, few times. Um, obviously, been in the same team as Mark and Don Clark when they were fighting. You know, so I've had an insight to what those guys have been into and things like that. And, you know, it's just something that's really interested me over the years. So here we are. You know, we get our chance at some point. As soon as all these dates get sorted out, we go again. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. And, of course, you shared the ring with the great George Glinski as well. So learning yeah, rounds George, for you yeah. there as well. <laughs> yeah, no, quality. It was, a, it was a cracking weekend. I mean, you've got somebody like Dan Chapman there. So you can't, yeah. can't keep your eyes off that guy. I mean, what a fucking talent he is. Oof. Just something else, mate. Something else to watch, mate. It's just something it really is. And then, you know, you've got people like James, James Kennelly, Smudger Smith, the proper people, mate. Do you know what I mean? You can't help but get on with them. And I've been up to Golden Team's gym up in Leeds with um, Smudger. I've trained with him. And, you know, he's helped me for my, my last unlicensed fight. I went up there, did, did a session with him, like, tore me to pieces. And, um, you know, I'm due to go up to see Kennelly at some point when he's not got a broken arm. Um, you know, they're just proper people, always wanting to help people. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the phone, you know, if they notice that something's going on, they always give you a shout and things like that. You know, Mickey Parker's, you know, you can't help but listen to that guy. The guy's as fit as a bloody ox. Yeah. You know, as BKB fighters go, if you want to emulate somebody, there's Sean George, Mickey Parker. Yeah. You know, those guys absolutely eat miles for breakfast every single day. They're proper people, you know, so... It's just a, it's a privilege to be fighting with them, you know, under the same roof, in the same ring. So, you know, buzzing about, really am, so. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, as I say, you've you've tasted the competition now. But, of course, you're no stranger to combat sports. You've had a, no. a very, well, I'll show you a storied career. You've had a, a massive impact on the Bournemouth unlicensed scene. You've had some epic fights. I've watched a fair few of them. A recent title fight and rematch was particularly exciting. Can you talk yeah. to me a bit about your boxing career? Because obviously you started off at the amateurs and then you moved um, over to the unlicensed. Yeah, well, basically started off as an amateur when I was 13. You know, just a couple of fights then and just plodding on. And then you get to a certain age where you find like drink, women, yeah. going out clubbing. You know, boxing was the least of my worries back then. I was more interested in what I could and couldn't do on the streets and shit like that, really. Yeah. But um, about five years ago, and it's just been a passion of mine, really. I've, I've, I eat, sleep, live boxing. You know, my daughter's 15 now. She does a bit of boxing with me, and hopefully when all this sorted out, she's going to go down the amateur route and bits and pieces like that. But, you know, I've been with um, Steve Liddell at Hands of Stone for nearly three years now and just brought on my boxing massively. You know, put me in a position where he's like, look, just let's work on the simple stuff that works for me. You know, not doing nothing stupid and... You know, we've worked towards, you know, a few good wins now. You know, one of these little titles that you get down here in the town and things like that. So it is what it is. But, you know, this now is like the big league for me. As, as at my age of 37 now, this ain't going to get no bigger for me now. You know, Jim and Joe giving me the opportunity to, you know, just fight on their shows is just, you know, something else. So and of I'm going to just grab it, with, grab it with both hands as much as I can. So Yeah, no, 100%. And of course... We mentioned from the offset you're the alternate in the BKB 23 yeah. prize fighter. Yeah. Looking at the competition there, Cunningham, Hill, uh, who else is there off the top Podmore, of my head? Podmore. Podmore. Andrew Ross. Andrew Ross. You know, is... 
it's an interesting array of talent. A few guys in there that haven't actually boxed, so you do have that. If course, you like, yeah, the MMA you know, background that they've got, yeah, definitely. And so. of course, Ross, who's never actually laced up a pair of gloves, he's told me that he's, he's really just fight. done bare knuckle, pit, a pit fighter yeah, at, pit, pit at fight. heart. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I've, I've done my research on. I mean, these four guys. I mean, you know, I wish them all the best of luck. You know, you know, I'm there to, in case something goes on, and Jim and Joe are cover themselves on the prize fighter. Yeah. You know, it's not really a position that I, I'd like to be in, but I'm there. You know, I've got my foot in the door, and I wish them all the best. You know, the camps, even when they're fighting. You know, I'd rather get my fight after the, the prize fighter than have to fight on a show that somebody's pulled out injured or they can't carry on. But I'm there for that job. You know, that's my reason of being there. You know, like I say, I don't want anybody to get hurt or injured during a yeah. camp. You know, but if it happens, it happens. I'm. Mm. There and waiting, so you know, it's the case of there's, there's some fucking good guys there. There's four really strong guys. You've got Podmore, is obviously going to be the favorite. Didn't give a fuck who he fights, getting there of anybody on a day's notice, even when he gets off a plane, apparently. You know, so yeah. you know, you've got some tough guys. You, Andrew Ross's fights, you see the pit fight, and you know, it's tough fights. But the MMA boys, Garrett and Rob, you know, big guys as well, you know, so they're tough. They don't fight that martial arts scene for not being tough guys, do they? You know, so. Definitely. You know, respect to them all, and you've got to have respect for them because anybody that thinks that you're getting into a ring with a heavyweight, one shot fucking finishes. You. You've got no gloves, bone on bone. You're getting broken faces, you're getting broken hands. You know, and that's just the way that it is. But that's what we're all signed up for, and that's what we all love, isn't it? You know, so. So, with your boxing background, do you see yourself as a big contender for that? You know, time? I'm always going to be a contender, like all four of them, all contenders. You know, but it's at the end of the day, we're all human. We all feel pain, and we all bleed the same. So. Yep. You know, some of them are a bit taller than me. I've, I've fight tall guys. I've got, I've got a lad that comes down to the gym. He's six foot seven. He hits like a fucking an ox. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it, it is what it is. If you don't go in there thinking that you can't win, then you shouldn't be in there, should you? Really? You know. So it's a case of they can have to beat me to, to make me lose, aren't they? That, that's just the bottom of the line. So, Definitely. but no, there's um, they're all cracking guys. I wouldn't. I've got nothing bad to say about them. You know, I wish them all the best. So. We just want to get in there and get our fucking done. If the dates are coming up, then everybody can get to it a bit more, you know? So Definitely. And if that, obviously, that fight is technically a debut, it may not happen. If it doesn't yeah. happen, alternative plans? Have they been laced for you, another yeah, well, debut? Yeah, Jim, Jim said to me, like, like uh, the last stand-in on the last prize fight, they, they guarantee you a fight on the show after. Yep. You know, God, God willing that all the guys get through fit and healthy. You know, it could be either one of them, those four. You know, like I say, I'm, I don't really look at people that who I can and can't fight. It's, we're all in the same position, you know. At the end of the day, Jim and Joe's position is to choose who we fight. It's down to them, isn't it? So, you know, like I say, I haven't got any bad feeling against anybody. So it's just a case if we've got a fight, we've got a fucking fight. You know, it's just the same as they're going to be with me, isn't it? So. And what is it like being an alternate? Because obviously you're not entirely sure you're going to be um, fighting. Does it change your work ethic leading up to the contest? Uh, yeah, it does. It's in a real weird position because, you know, you're not guaranteed to fight. So yeah. I'm going to train as hard as these four guys are. I'm going to turn up on the day. I'm going to warm up. I'm going to have my hands wrapped. I'll be still in my shorts and everything ready to go. And it might not happen, you know. But well, that shit happens, isn't it? That's life. We're in for that position. I know that. So, but, you know, like Jim said, they've guaranteed me a fight after the prize fighter, so Definitely. whoever whoever the lucky guy is that I get to share the ring with, you know, I take my hat off to him because, you know, I, it's it's a tough sport, isn't it? You know, anybody that goes into it thinking that it's not a tough sport, then you know, you've got something wrong with them, really, isn't they? You're gonna find out very quickly in there. So uh, biggest yeah. lie detector in the world. So right. talking about. BKB and obviously you know quite a few people in the game. Mark Rawls, you've obviously had a great yeah. friendship with him. You've trained together under Hands of Stone. Obviously he's changed. He's got his own gym yeah. now, the Pride's Boxing Gym. What was it like following him? What was the process like for you? Because obviously you were there. I've, I've seen you at the shows before. Well, you've been in the back room. What was the process like at a BKB show? Well, it's, it's a wicked process, isn't it? Just to be part of, even part of that backstage part. It's, mm. you know, you get, get a bit of fire in your belly. It makes you want to be there makes you want to do exactly what I'm, what I'm hoping to be doing, you know. So I originally thought, with, I seen Don Clark go through for his first few fights with the BKB and then Mark signed. You know, it's just been a gradual thing for us and everybody's got different goals in life. And then BKB was 
my final call really you know there was a different route I wanted to go but this Covid sort of like screwed that up but yeah. you know for me this is the biggest stage that I'm ever going to get on so I'm going to take it with both hands like I said prior you know so and finally just before we go into thanks and sponsors a message a message to the fans fans of yours fans who might not know you what does Carl Hobley have that can really make an impact in BKB I'm, I'm just a bit I'm a different type of fighter I can switch I can hit with both hands you know so just going to bring something before but I'm quite active you know I like, I like to box off the front foot I can fight on the back foot so it all depends what type of fight I've got stood in front of me you know so if somebody's coming at me then we're going to go at it aren't we so it's just the bottom line of it you know they're going to try and do to me what I want to do to them so there's no two ways about it we're going to have a good fight and entertain some people and I hope everybody enjoys it you know so the heavyweights everybody wants to see a heavyweight get fucking smashed don't they at the end of the day so <laughs> they do. you know it's been a long time and it's something I'm really looking forward to this tournament and yeah. hopefully, well, hopefully we see you in that tournament, if not onto yeah. the, the next fight, maybe one of those lads. You, you could end up just having a great front row seat to a, a future contender. Exactly, so. exactly that, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like I say, I'll, I'll take Matt off to the guys. They, Jim and Joe have picked the four best heavyweights that they could find at the yep. time before I managed to get my name into the mix. Do you know what I mean? So it's a case of I wish them all the best. I really do. I don't want to be in a position where I take somebody's spot because they've unfortunately been injured through training, you know, because I know how hard it is training and working, you know, so I wish them all the best, you know, stay fit and healthy and, um, you know, we move forward with it and I'll see them at the show, so. We love it, we love it. So we'll talk about thanks and sponsors. Who have you got to thank yeah. for this fight? We've got uh, Marwood Roofing Limited. They're um, a couple of lads that I grew up with and I work for them myself. So, and um, from my best mates, JK Cars and Commercials, He's a lovely guy in the days, guttering, born from Paul Carcells. Obviously, my gym, Hands of Stone, Funky Peach that make my t shirts. You know, they're all cracking people, so they're all behind me for this one. Like I say, so it's a bit of a weird one for them being sponsors because it's hard to sponsor somebody that might not be fighting. So yeah. you know, I've, got, I've got a main reason is one of my mates passed away, Rich. Bless him, I'm sure so more tickets I sell, I, I'm giving all my ticket money. Things are, and I've got a couple of other bits that I'm going to do with, you know, God willing, if I win win the prize fight, if I'm in there, then that money will go to some charities. So, you know, I've, I don't really fight for money. I'm quite comfortable living the way that I just want to have a good, good scrap, really. So, perfect, perfect. Well, we love to hear it. We love to hear charity coming yeah. into the situation. But, Carl, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, and Lovely. we'll speak and again you, soon. Thank Lovely. you, mate. You take care, buddy. Speak to you soon, Bye. mate. Bye bye.